Hi, and welcome everyone. Today I'm going to discuss how to have faster creative production, no matter what, where, or who is involved. But first, a little bit about us. OpenText Hightail helps teams to create better by streamlining communication, reviews, and approval in one place, centered around the visual asset. We're an essential collaboration software for creative content reviews and approvals. With one place for creative teams to collaborate in the cloud and share large multimedia files, collect precise feedback and approve content, Hightail streamlines the creative process and helps teams keep marketing campaigns on schedule. And now for a little bit about me. My name is Layla Rivas and I've helped Fortune 500 consumer and tech companies craft creative campaigns and digital strategies for the past 20 years. As VP of Brand and Digital Services, I lead brand creative, web, and marketing technology services at OpenText. And today we'll be looking at the landscape that explains why agency and really all creative work has become so challenging. The resources, including the guidance, tools, people, and skills that you need to overcome these challenges. So the four things that can make it better, upfront investment, good project management, your team, and empowerment. So what's the problem today? Let's get started with a look at what's causing us so much stress. Here's why we're pulling our hair out. Whether you're an agency or a brand marketer, there is a drive to do more with less, meaning tight budgets and schedules that don't allow you the time or the resources you need. Um, you know, during a recent survey of agencies, marketers and publishers that we conducted with a third party partner, we found that 82% of respondents had fewer resources than needed to meet the demands of creative asset production and 79% said that having too many projects occur occurring at the same time led them to blowing their budgets. So when it comes to doing more, we're faced with more projects to meet increased demands, involving too many people in those projects, too many cooks in the kitchen, we all know that one, and then a hodgepodge of tools and processes. And the fewer resources include budget constraints, everybody's being asked to you know, downsize, and more projects. So more projects and fewer people mean less time to devote to our best projects. You know, the creative process, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit broken. Um, add to that fact that, you know, it's filled with miscommunications, too many tools, and a lengthy approval process. And even if you feel like you have solid internal creative review and an approval process in place, is it really working? Does it include external reviewers or stakeholders who aren't likely following a process? I'm pretty sure that happens too. So, but despite the odds, you can improve your creative production process. I think there are four main things you need to do in order to ensure a better creative project. The first thing is a big one. While you might be inclined to jump into a project with both feet, setting the right expectations ensures things don't get off balance. Make those time investments up front. You know, I have a saying, it's my favorite saying, um, and it's no brief, no business. I can't stress this enough. You have to ensure everyone involved in the project is on the same page right from the start. You can't just provide a 40 page PowerPoint deck where the basics aren't even really answered and the creative team has to dig through the details to get to what you want. You know, so what is what are actually the needs? Um, this is great supplementary resources and materials, but you should specifically supply some of the key components of the project in a project brief. Those are the deliverables, the timing, um, who's your target, any relevant behavior we should know about. Also, here are just a few important things to include in your kickoff efforts. You remember the RACI, right? You want to define who is responsible, who is accountable, who's consulted, and who's informed for each portion of the project early on, and do it so everyone feels a level of involvement and comfort. It's also clear who the buck stops with and where the swing lanes are. Um, it can also help you set everyone's expectations. Have a project manager. This might seem like a no-brainer, but with, with the 
you know, diminishing resources, people try to put one person to do multiple things, that dedicated project manager really needs to be the person that brings it all together, focuses on the end goal, those timelines and deliverables to keep the project moving. You want to develop a universal blueprint of sort, having that discussion and everyone's everyone getting that blessing on what to use at the beginning sets you up for moving forward without running issues, you know, too tied to that. And that's also, you know, the RACI document can help with that too, but you want to know what are we doing here and who is involved. So communication is key. You know, that may seem obvious, but things like the scoping process, those needs can be exhaustive and include a lot of specifics, such as what are the number of pages and the number of revision rounds we're going to get? Include what deliverables deliverables will be and have an extra check in early on to make sure those expectations are being met. You know, number two, pay attention to project management. As I mentioned, project management is absolutely critical. Why? Look, so many projects, so little time. This is a breakdown of project and deliverables at a typical large company. As you can see, the numbers fluctuate greatly with between 4,000 to 7,000 deliverables per quarter. So it can be difficult to plan resources. That's where the right project management skills can help you keep up with your large and often fluctuating workflow. Productivity shouldn't be the enemy of creativity, yet sometimes it just seems to feel that way. You know, some statistics say that as many as 80% of people report more pressure to be productive over being creative. Well, with the right project management skills, you actually can have it all. So the right project management skills. Here's what I consider to be, you know, great project management skills. I know I mentioned it before, but the improper briefing, make sure everyone knows what needs to happen, the timing and the right messaging. You know, being able to communicate clearly so that everyone knows all of the resources that are also available to them to ensure they maximize usage without cannibalizing other projects. And those resources can come from different groups. Um, while the first two items are important, it's also key to realize when pumping the brakes on a project to reassess is actually more optimal than fast delivery. Um, this happens a lot with messaging. Um, and focus that can change. Uh, minds can change, direction might change. So you don't necessarily always want to move forward quickly if you have to revisit everything and redo it all later. Um, so managing a project well means you know not having to be in the hole later. <laughs> and then you know staying agile and being ready to pivot. In the creative world, we all know that changes can come about quickly. The ability to pivot between projects also means arming yourself with the right information so you can jump into what's new to you with both feet. It might feel like there isn't enough time or resources to get dedicate to research as you would add on another project, but this has to be a priority, even if it's only for a few hours. It will end up saving you time in the long run. So research industry pain points. Get a general overview of regulations affecting the industry dig into the competition and look at industry publications for current trends. Do your research. Any good strategist needs to know that. Any good creative should be thinking about that. Um, ask key questions about those topics as well as what problems they're offering solves for its users, how users historically used to, used to solve a problem before their offering, and how their offering is different from everything else out, out there. Ask the right questions, you know. And know who on your team has knowledge or even adjacent knowledge of that type of project, the medium you're working in or the industry so that you can place the right people on the right projects. Knowing the strengths of everyone, your team uh, of everyone on your team is critical. So speaking about people. Got to find your all star team. You are nothing without a strong team um, and it's a critical component. Uh, to ensure that you have the right people in place with any amazing creative project. Your people are a key resource that you need to optimize, um, so you want to make sure they have the right characteristics. Uh, flexibility is also key as being able to fit within your organization's model. So let me tell you a little bit more about the right people um, and I'll give you some research at the same time. 
According to CareerBuilder, the cost of making a bad hire can be as high as $24,000, and the Society for Human Resource Management says it can take 42 days on average to hire for a given position. That's a big hit to both your budget and your productivity if you don't hire someone who has the right skills from the start. You know, as I mentioned, flexibility is one of the biggest things I look for in someone to help ensure they're able to pivot between projects, industries, and mediums. When hiring, I don't necessarily always look for someone that, is, that has held the exact same position before. For example, working in the B2B tech space, it's good to see someone with consumer goods experience or who has worked across a number of different areas and industries or products and personas. Um, it gives a broader range of um, marketing tactics and strategies to pull from and a, and a fresh view. So here are three things or three questions I like to ask to ensure flexibility. Um, question number one can help indicate people's level of EQ. What is a project that you were most disappointed in and why was that? You know, in retrospect, what could have been done differently? I like to ask these questions because I like to see if they, what they pick as um, something that fell down. Do they put blame elsewhere? If they do, how did they resolve it? It helps me understand how they, their outlook. Um, the next question I ask is, what is a role that you've never had, which you'd like to have? Uh, you know, I think it could be in a different industry. It could even be in a different department, but this can help you gauge what a person is open to. Are they open to new experiences? Are they thoughtful about what's interesting and different? Does, does that align with something that interests and excites you? You know, these are all things that um, you want to ask when you're looking for teammates. Um, and then the final question is, if you could create a program for employees, what would be some of the activities or experiences you would create? This really just is kind of a, a fun question to see how and what um, creative ideas they can think of, how they think about their colleagues. Um, again, it's about it's a valuable to get a better idea if this is, you know, if this person organizes um, according to your company's mission and values. Now, moving on, you know, the dynamic of how everyone is working is so different than it was a year ago. You know, for example, some marketers hire their own internal resources to get their job done. Others make space for agency partners on site or at their offices. And then there's still plenty of external agency businesses to go around. So no matter where you sit, per se, you're part of a team with a mutual goal. And it's important to keep the lines of communication open as if you're all sitting together in the same room. We know right now that's not really happening. So same virtual room, so to speak. Um, but that's another reason why proper briefing and collaboration tools are so important um, in this virtual environment, um, whether you're an internal member of the team, embedded or external. Um, and so here are some of a, a few tips that help convey the feeling of a team and sort of the way those roles can work together and how to think of them, whether you're on the agency side um, or internal. You know, internally, I'm not a huge fan of tons of meetings makes it harder to get the work done. However, I wouldn't discount the weekly meeting. It's your chance to get dis disparate groups together to discuss priority projects. Um, when you've got a creative team that's strapped, that's creating a lot of volume, you need to prioritize. So these meetings could be priori you know, a prior prioritization point. Um, it's important for everyone to realize though that during these meetings, not everything is a priority, even though everybody usually thinks their thing is a priority. So you want to make sure to play to everyone's strengths as a project unfolds. There's production work, there's creative concepting. So making sure you have the right people working together in the right way is key and you're prioritizing where your time is going to be spent. Um, you know, if you're embedded, so an external agency partner that has sort of on-site space for when we, you know, get back into the office, um, but you're sort of, you have a company email, um, you're an agency partner, but you have access to their systems. You know, for this group, I think blending into the culture of how your environment works is important. It can be a challenge, right? Creative agencies might have a different style than a corporate um, embed experience. So bringing a fresh take, um, people hire outside agencies for that fresh take. 
So you don't sacrifice, uh, you know, you don't want, you don't want to sacrifice who you are. And there's a famous quote from Chanel, I actually have it on my wall. It says, be who you are, not who the world wants you to be. So I think it's important to be who you are and bring a fresh perspective into that on-site or in-bed environment. But I also think it's important to be observant and see, is it a place where people are not, you know, as um, open as you are? Is it a bit more quiet or reserved? How do you work within that constraint to learn how to communicate a little bit differently to achieve your goals? Or is it a place where people are very open and share a lot? You know, how can you flex within different communication environments, still be yourself, but also, you know, read the room? Um, if it's, you know, so I think the other angle here is for the outside agency, the external um, partner. And there's this dilemma um, in the agency world that it's, you know, dying and everything's going to go um, in-house. And the thing is, having worked on both sides, you always need external partners. Um, it's important to remember that brands and companies hire external resources for your external view. Sometimes when you're internal all the time, you get in your own way. I've noticed even with our own creative team, they're amazing and their job is to make sure everything's on brand. When you have to start to shift the brand, it's almost more of a challenge because you're so used to wanting to stay true to the brand that you've helped build. So that's where sometimes external partners can come in. Um, but I will also say that you want an external partner for their fresh view, but don't go completely off brief either. You know, um, one time this happened to me and it's frustrating with a client where they say, I know you asked us for this, but we decided to give you this. Um, always give what the brief is asking for. Then go into your new idea if you have something totally fresh and different that wasn't asked for. Um, I've been in a situation where um, I was approving something as a VP and once it got to the, we got into the CMO meeting, the agency decided to go and present something completely different that we hadn't worked on together. I had been giving notes and direction based on what my knowledge was and it wasn't good. Um, you know, I was surprised it wasn't the work that I knew would deliver um, and you don't want to surprise your customer, your prospect. The, there were concepts you're working on together that are in line with what you know your boss had asked for and what the business needs. And then when you're presented with something totally different that's off brief, you know, you don't get the business. And so that's what happened. Um, so I think you've got to remember to give your customer and client what they're asking for, but also what they're looking for from your outside perspective. And they're looking for your consult as an outside person. So it's important to address that too. If you think an approach isn't the right approach, let them know why you think that might not be the right approach. And four, you know, empower your team with tools. You've got to have the right skill sets and the right people on board, ready to work together in a cohesive way. But you know, how can you empower them to do great work? Well, the right resources, having the right tools in your arsenal can help keep your projects moving so that the need for productivity isn't actually working against the need to be creative. You know, according to our survey, our creative processes are getting bogged down with too many people and departments involved. We ran a survey that found that 74% of our respondents said they work with five or more departments while de developing creative assets. That's not including the 32% that also work with external partners. And sometimes those that are, that are involved in the decision making aren't even brought in until the end, which can cause a lot of mix, mixed messages. You know, and with people wanting to do more with less resources, the right tools become increasingly important. Tools, you know, for video content creation that you don't need to be an editor or go shoot, project management tools, and even file sharing creative collaboration tools like Hightail, OpenText Hightail, that can keep it all all the content feedback and approvals in one place. Again, streamlining is important. It's important to be realistic and clear with everyone about how long a project will take, as well as how many of your precious resources it will take. Those miscommunications almost always lead to disappointing results. So, you know, you want the right streamlined processes, you want the right tools and the time and money. Those are the final three tips for you to move on into all of your creative endeavors. Um, you know, I wanted to say thank you so much for attending. Um, 
just a bit about Hightail before we go. We have a special offer for today's attendees. If you visit Hightail.com backslash creative collaboration, you can start a free 14 day trial of our collaboration software, which is built to help clients and agencies build better creative relationships by streamlining the creative process review. So you can help internal and external teams get on the same page with one solution, share previews, store large multimedia files, get that precise feedback, collect it and route approvals and assign follow up. So thank you again for attending and we hope you love OpenText Hightail.